Hi guys, it's Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. Today I am here with, I'm not sure if it's called the Indie Now Polish tag, the Indie tag, it's some sort of Indie Now Polish chit chat tag. Um, I think there's also going to be a few of us uploading it on the same day, I'm not sure who yet because we're all kind of filming it and confirming, so I will link some other people's channels down below for you. I know one of them is definitely going to be Amanda from Fashion Fitting, but there might be more people, I'm just pre-filming so... I can't tell you for 100% right now. But there are 10, nine, nine questions, so let's get started. The first one is, what was your very first indie polish that you purchased? Now, I actually got these first two polishes from Rainbow Connection, when Rainbow Connection very first launched. Now, Rainbow Connection is a UK indie nail polish retailer, um, and when this first launched, I remember being sitting there waiting, I followed the Instagram page, I was ready for the website to launch because it was such an exciting concept to me. Um, and the first two that I picked up were from Black Cat Lacquer, which I don't think exists anymore. The first one is called, and if I have swatches, I will pop them up. I'm not sure if I do, I might have to swatch them for this video. The first one I have is called Celestial Dancer, and it's this beautiful blue jelly base with a ton of larger glitters, squares, circles, moons, stars. And then the other one is Let It Snow, which is a light blue crilly base with a ton of white glitters in snowflakes, um, and then all in matte white circles, mint little circles, and a little bit of blue in there as well. So this was like really one of the iconic brands, this and Hair Polish um, and Wicked Polish were like some of the first ones that I really caught my eye back in the day. And like I say, I picked those up from Rainbow Connection and they were my first ever indies. Question two is, what's an indie nail polish lemming that you want but you have not been able to get your hands on? I'm very lucky that I don't think I have any. I Today as well, I've filled my update to my lemming list video. So if that goes up before this... I will try and remember to link it down below, if not it's coming, where I showed three indies that I wanted and I was able to get hold of them. The things with indies and lemmings are, it's obviously harder because near enough every indie nail polish is limited edition, um, they're not going to be made forever. There are some that are more part of like the core staple line for indies, but in general most indies are limited edition and there's so many indies coming out these days, people just don't have the chance to pick them all up, so I don't have any at the moment. But I can quite easily see how people have a lots of indie lemmings. Number three is name a polish you've bought because of a YouTuber. Now I don't think I've ever bought a specific polish because of a YouTuber, but I have explored lots of new brands because of YouTubers. I, I pay attention, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, and whenever I see new indie brands being spoken about or brands being spoken about by YouTube said so always go and check them out. One of the first ones that I remember looking up was actually Palish. Um, and I remember that Jess had got a couple of crellies from her. And I remember being like, right, get onto the website immediately. You need to find out what these are. Um, just, just like I say, indie brands in general. So that's mainly how I'm inspired to look at new brands these days. YouTube more than Instagram, because Instagram is just a minefield. But I've been inspired by so many different brands through YouTube channels. One of the reasons why I like to watch. Question number four is, what is your favourite and least favourite type of indie polish? My favourite, I like crelly mixes, and that's just, that's very non-specific, just, just, crelly mixes. I enjoy ones that are, I guess, a mix of hollow and something, or crelly and something, and glitter and something. I love mixtures of things, and I think, like, I always use the word, when I talk about glam polish, glam polishedness, when there's such a unique, strange mixture of things in a bottle, but it just makes complete perfect sense, and it looks stunning. I love that type of indie polish, just the mixtures of things, and the crellies that people come up with. My least favourite, don't know if I'm going to annoy anybody, because this is very popular right now, magnetics and thermals they're just not my thing they're just not my thing um part of the reason is i can never get them to work or to capture them on film very well um they're just not they're just not for me number five is what name an indie polish that per fits your personality to a t now i remember when i got this polish i was like dead this is me this is, if i was going to create a polish this is what it would be this is autumn symphony by frenzy polish frenzy doesn't exist anymore in this I think she's slightly rebranded, but this is a like, a middle toned blue with a ton of bronze flakies in here. I just remember when I got this, I was just like, this is me, this, this is, if I was going to make a polish, I would do blue and bronze, that's the main things that I would do. So I absolutely love that one, and I just think that it was meant for me. Number six is, what indie nail polish company do you wish you owned every bottle slash collection from? Um, I really enjoy... Oh, it really bothers me that I am missing a few nine zeros. I'm going to throw that out yet there, although I do have a large majority of the collection. Um, KB Shimmer would probably be one that I would say that I wish I had every single polish because I don't think that I've ever seen KB Shimmer put a foot wrong, honestly. 
I don't think there's anything that's really come up that I've been like, that is horrific, why have they done that? And consistently people talk about them in a, in a good light. There's never really anything negative to say about KB Shimmer. I think Christy organises her brand very professionally. So definitely KB Shimmer is a brand I'd like to have lots more of. Number seven is name an indie polish that physically made your jaw drop when you saw it. Now it's not one that I own and I think I think I, I can know where to get a swatch from it for. Um, and it's one by Ever After that came out for the... Um, the stones collection for polish pickup i will put the name of it here and a picture of it but it was just a dark blue with so much opalescent glitters and it just radiate like there was just something from within and the way that the jelly built up i was just i loved that one so much and i've heard there's going to be some more coming out from them in like different color mixes but that one for sure even though i can't even remember what it's called but it was by ever after for sure number eight is what do you look for most when you purchase an indie is it perfect formula amazing color or affordability affordability definitely plays into there i'm not going to name any names but i think there are some indie brands that hoik up their prices higher than what they need to be most people will happily pay more for an indie than for a mainstream polish these days it kind of seems um with a mixture of things involved in that you're supporting a business they're normally more unique they're normally made in small batches so for, but affordability for me just i've seen some brands that i think it's just taking the mick with it um i also again yeah, just look for really the, the mixture of colors you can never tell what a formula is like until you're going to get it in your hands so i really go it's stunning and it's unique and does it not cost a fortune okay fine i'm going to have it they're like the two components that i look for really a lot and number nine is what direction would you like to see indie polish go I would just like to see it continue to grow. I love seeing new brands. I love seeing um, women and men run these businesses from home and grow like an empire. I really love the potential of where an indie brand can go. Um, I would like to see more people trying to do something different rather than trying to catch a trend. And that's not meant anything in particular. I just find it's very interesting. We have waves of very similar polishes coming. And I just wish that people would be like, oh, I see X is doing Y over here. I'm going to do B over here. If you know, do you know what I mean? I think that some things are pretty standard in spring. You're going to have certain things. In summer, you're going to have certain things. But I just love it when people do like completely weird, like un unusual collections and it's like oh it, it's spring but we've got this but that's really cool i just love the unexpected is basically what i want to see and i want to see more brands being unexpected so how much do you guys love indies do you love them as much as me leave me some comments down below and if you have a youtube channel or a blog or an instagram you can do this tag i tag all of you give me a thumbs up subscribe and i will see you later